okay the next area now is how to record office expenses and here I'm going to add um, two things too the way we sell on credit and we also sell by cash we can also incur expenses on credit too and also pay cash it's possible um, an electrician or probably like a technician can walk in here to fix the AC I will tell the technician ah, our MD is not around maybe you should come back tomorrow to collect your money we have incurred an expenses that means we are owing the person so there's a way we record it which is different from when you write a check immediately and give to that technician the first one is you have incurred expenses and have not paid for that expenses the second one now is you have incurred for that expenses and also paid for it so they are two different things entirely the way you treat that in quickbook is just like the way you treat your invoice and receipts so to so treat your expenses in QuickBooks, let's talk about the first one, which is the credit one. Now, when you want to record an expenses that you have incurred and have not paid for that expenses, you use enter bill. It's a bill. You understand? So you use enter bill. Enter bill, you can see enter outstanding bills from vendor. It's used to enter expenses that you have incurred. Oh, we have used to record amount you are owing. Another thing again is that uh, maybe let's say let's use the, the PACM bill. PSN can come with a bill and say, oh, this is the amount you are owing for the month of June. You have not paid for that, but you have used that light. You understand? That is an expense that has been incurred. To record that in your system, you enter bill. Now, anytime you want to pay it off in the future, I said follow this arrow. This arrow is a guide. The next thing you will do is to do what? Pay bill. You can see that the arrow is pointing. So, this pay bill is for paying all the expenses. Hmm? Yeah. Use the arrow. Yes. Now you can incur an expenses on behalf of someone else. That's why it's coming down. You understand? Let's say I'm incurring an expenses now. Hmm? Okay. Let me use a favorite example. You ask me to go and get a laptop for you, hmm? and I told you that ah, I'm going to enter transport to to go to that place, and I'll tell you you will refund me that transport. You understand? So when I go there and I incur an expenses. Hmm? On, your on your behalf so i can say oh i am owing these people it's supposed to pay me what i need to do is create an invoice and send to you and tell you you are owing me because i'm supposed to remit to these people you understand so that's why the arrow is pointing down so it's telling you that you can also incur expenses on behalf of a customer or a supplier so that's why you come down here so which means you need to create an invoice for it but if it's an expense that is direct to you you're supposed to pay it off. You see that you need to pay it off. So that's why it's pointing down. Yes. When you are not owing. Anytime you want to pay that bill, then you use pay bill. So let's demonstrate that. If you click enter bill. Now enter bill is not only used for expenses. You can also use it for item. When you buy item. Let's say we, apart from the production that we do, we can also order more crude oil, maybe from a partner firm, which we did not pay, which we did not pay for, exactly. So when you buy products on credit too, you can also use enter bill. The difference is that for expenses, you select expenses. For item or product, you select item. If you come here, you'll see that crude oil is here. If you come to expenses and click this arrow, you see these are the expenses so enter b is not only used for expenses you also use it for item you bought on credit so here expenses you come here i said something before that if you have a list of accounts or items to select when we look at these expenses i'll say ah the expense you want to select is not here what do you do you add new but you have to be sure that the account head is not here so that you don't create duplicate accounts so here you come here, you select add new. The account type is expenses, that's what I want to add. Then you click continue. So the account name will be, let's say, AC repair. Or AC repair and maintenance. Then you click save and close. So we've added this here. How much is it? We'll enter. If the amount is 50,000, you enter 50,000 Naira here. If you are paying the person by check, you enter the check number. Here too. You can see bill due on, which is when you're supposed to pay that expenses. Now, if this particular expenses is incurred in respect of a project, you come here, 
we select that project. I'm going to treat this project separately. Do you not select that's a job? You select a job. Or maybe a drilling job. You select drilling here. That means this 50,000 is incurred in respect of this drilling job, assuming. Then pay to the order of who are you paying? Though I can save this transaction without the vendor. You know that. But it's proper for me to select the vendor. So here I will select who am I paying. If the name of the vendor is not here, what do I do? Add new. So here I can call it AC technician. Maybe the name of the person. Opening balance. You know what opening balance means? That means if I'm owing the person before, yeah, that's why you enter the opening balance. If you are not, you leave it like that. You click OK. So we've added it. So what we are doing now is we are telling the system that we are owing this AC technician the sum of 50,000 Naira. So that's what we'll do. If there's any address, you enter. Then once you're done, you click Save and Close. So this is an expenses outstanding. So this expenses outstanding, we appear in our balance sheet too. You understand? As a liability because we are owing the person and all that. So, when next we want to pay the person, you don't have to start looking for. Now, when you go to pay bills here, you can see these are the people you are owing. You can see the initial setup we did, my tech. This is a supplier. Now, this is AC technician. So, this will show you all the people you are owing. If you have contractors you are owing in dollars, you can see here, you can also come here to select it. You show you can also you are owing in dollars and all that, but because you don't have any to show you. So we are going to do the setup for dollars separately. So this is the transaction. Now if I want to pay this AC technician now, all I need to do is you tick this figure here. If you tick this figure, then you enter the amount. Amount to pay, $50,000. It can be less. So you enter the actual amount you are paying that technician. Then you will come here. From which bank are we paying? You will select the bank. It will tell you the ending balance in your bank. If you are paying the person check, you will click assign check number because you need to assign check number to that payment. You click assign check number there. You review your transaction. You click save and close here. This way you now enter the check number. Then you click OK. So I've paid the person, done. If I go back to pay bills again, you see that we no longer have AC technician again because I've paid AC technician 50,000 Naira. So anytime you want to enter a bill or enter an expense that you incur, you use enter bill. If you want to pay that bill, you select pay bills. Yes. Now, if you are only the person before, at the point of adding that technician, definitely before you add that technician, you will definitely enter the outstanding balance. But if it's like, oh, I didn't add this technician before, I just remember that we are only this technician. You come here, you add new. This as of, you have to go back to opening balance date. You understand? Opening balance date to add this person. That is if you are if, the, if you are only the person before you set up QuickBooks. You have to go back to the because the opening balance date has to be the same. But if that transaction occur during after QuickBooks, you don't need to use this one. Just enter the person's name directly here. This is where you now enter the transaction. Any transaction that occur after you set up QuickBooks, use your normal transaction entry. But if it's before QuickBook, uh, yes, exactly, as at then, zero. So, any question on enter bill? Now, if it's an expense that you incur and you're paying cash, we don't want to owe you. Take your money, go. They are different. The first one is enter bill. The second one now is use right check. You understand? Write check is an expense that you have not entered as a bill in QuickBook or to record the cash transaction. I am paying you immediately. I don't want to owe you. You just go to write check. You see the difference between write check and enter bill. In enter bill here, did you see any bank account? Is there any bank account here? No. It's only at the point of paying this bill that you will see bank account. But in write check, 
the first thing you select is your bank account. You can see bank account showing here. So what this means is that you use this to pay your supplier or your contractor immediately. So the first thing you select is from which bank are we paying? You select the bank. Pay to the order of who are we paying? You select the person you are paying. If it's AC technician, you select the person here. Then AC repair, enter the amount. So let's pick another person. So let's say we have another vendor that does um, furniture. Obviously, the name of the company is Furniture Limited. But we ask the person to do a new furniture. But you look at it. This, the name of the vendor is Furniture Limited. We select. Now we are buying a new furniture. We don't have to select it as an expenses. It's an asset. So which means the account to map it should be a fixed asset account. You are buying a furniture. You don't have to record it as an expenses. The furniture is an asset. So you come here, you will enter furniture and fitting. Then you enter the name 120,000 Naira. This is it here. So you click save and close. You can see different scenarios here. This first one is an expenses. So you don't have to go through and select uh, furniture expenses. It won't be right. It's an asset. So you need to select it as a fixed asset. So you come here, you select save and close. So I think our asset will now be increased. So if I go to my P and L, sorry, my balance sheet now. You can see my fixed asset has increased to 120. And I bought the fixed asset from Assets Bank money. So you can see it has been added to our assets. So that's different between enter bill and write check. Enter bill is for credit expenses, expenses you are not paying immediately. Write check is for the expenses that you are paying immediately. So whenever you are paying for that enter bill or expenses you have entered, you will need to use pay bill. Any question on that? Okay.